Hi there, this is Jenna from McGuire of Hero Arts, and I wanted to show you how to do this window card that has some elements that kind of float over the window. So I'm first going to start by stamping this bus element. This is from a Hero Arts Basic Gray stamp set, and I'm stamping it on Nina cardstock with Memento Black ink. I'm doing this because I want to use some Copic markers with it. So my favorite combination of paper and ink for Copic markers is the Memento Black Ink and Nina White cardstock, but there are several different options out there. Now notice I am stamping on the end of a white piece of paper and you'll see why soon. Now when I color with Copics, I like to use it for quick coloring. Um, there are all these great techniques and rules and such to follow with Copic markers to get great blending and shading and blending and great color combinations, but I tend to ignore um, all the rules and use it just for a great um, colors and quick coloring. So I did my bus in yellow, just quick and dirty here, and then I went in with another um, orange Copic and just am adding a little bit of um, orange color to it to make it look more like a bus. So I'm not really spending a whole lot of time making this look perfect, just wanted it to have some nice color to it. And then I'm going to color the stop sign. I used R24 and R27, those are my uh, favorite reds to use together. But again, you'll see that I'm not really spending much time blending this. And then I'm going in with a super light blue, just to add a little bit of color to the windows. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. And then when I'm done, I'm taking some of our flat metallic decor from Hero Arts and adding little centers to my bus wheels. Now that I've got this colored, I'm gonna actually take this white piece and fold it right across the top here. And the reason I'm doing this is so that when I cut it out, I'll actually cut out two buses, this yellow one and a plain white one behind it. And by keeping that crease on one edge, it keeps the paper from shifting. So I'll show you in a moment why we needed two of the buses, but here's a close look at the window card. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the background of this note card. I'm using our soft pool dye ink on this cloud background, and I'm going to stamp this on one of our new uh, pool note cards. The pool note cards come in a pack with three shades of pool. There's a light, medium, and dark. And for this particular card, I'm using the medium pool shade and I'll stamp this cloud on. Now this is a dye ink, so although it dries quickly, it slowly absorbs and evens out in the paper. So it'll look splotchy at first, but it'll look really nice after just a few minutes. Now after I've stamped this on the front, I wanna cut a window. And the way I do this is I put the edge of my paper at, I'm doing three quarters, but watch, I drop the blade about three quarters from the other edge, and I'm going straight up to about three quarters from the other end. And you'll see in just a moment, I'm going to turn this again and do the same thing. I don't, I line this up at three quarters on the right, drop my blade and cut again. So I'm not cutting all the way across, just from one corner of the window to the other. You could measure this out first, put little pencil marks, but to be honest, I'm quite, I think I find this quite easy just to do it this way. And if I cut a little bit too far, that's okay. It's, it's really no big deal. But basically I'm cutting three quarters of an inch in, from all four sides and just not cutting all the way across. And this is real easy to do with a nice trimmer. You'll see here I didn't cut all the way, so I'm just going in with my scissors and it really works out quite well to do this. You could again use a pencil and measure it all out, but this works well too. And now I have that centerpiece that I can use on a different card. Now for my alphabet stamps, I'm using these letters from Hero Arts. Now you could line up all your letters on a clear block and stamp them all at the same time, but I like to do letters one by one because that way I can make the letters really close together which I think makes for an easier to read greeting. So I'm just going to stamp a personalized greeting for my son here. And then I'm going to take some foam dots and put them on the ends of these strips and I've cut the strip so it stretches right across that window so the foam will hold it on both sides of the window. Now I wanted to add my bus here to the top um, kind of floating um, above this greeting now to do this, I needed something for it to adhere to. Um, the little bottoms of the, the wheels adhered to the strip just wasn't enough stability. So I'm actually creating like these little posts that will be hidden behind the bus that keep um, the bus in its place. So you'll see here, I just cut two little white strips and I'm gonna stick these out the bottom of the wheels. Now you could do this with any shape piece, um, just kind of hide these little posts that glue the two pieces together, which you'll see in a minute. But I've covered these posts with adhesive, put them behind my bus. Now I'm going to position this so that the wheels kind of hang over the top a little bit, just because I, I kind of like the look of it. 
and then it's, you'll see me kind of work my wheels onto the front of the green strip. But the adhesive of those posts is behind the green strip, so it holds it in there really nicely in place. So you'll see that there. Now here's the bad part about Copics. You can always see the coloring through the other side, which is fine. I like to hide this, so I have this other bus that I cut out at the same time back in the beginning. Remember when I folded that piece back? So I can hide all of the Copic coloring and also kind of sandwich my posts in place. And I've also cut a white strip so that I can, um, again, cover up the back and sandwich those posts in place. So I can be sure that this bus isn't going to be going anywhere. It'll stay uh, nice in its place, floating in the center of this window card. It really is kind of a fun look. So you can see all the pieces there. I also decided to add some clouds. So I have this set from Studio Calico. Really love the small and the large cloud in the set because they actually match up with the Fisker's punches. There's a large and extra large cloud punch. And both of these images from Studio Calico and Hero Arts fit into these punch shapes, which I just love. So you could first punch and then stamp right onto the shape. Since these are clear stamps, it's pretty easy to do. Again, I'm using that same soft pool ink so it'll even out over time. Another way that you could do this is to first stamp your image and then take the punch and you can kind of see where you're going to punch and get perfect alignment that way. Some, for some people it's easier to punch first, for some people it's easier to stamp first. So it really depends on, on what works best for you. Now I'm kind of tracing around this bus quickly with my pencils. You see I added my clouds on there. The reason I'm tracing that with my pencil is so I know where I can write my message behind the bus and it won't show through the window to the front. So I'm writing within my pencil lines and then I'll go and erase those. So my message there is hidden perfectly behind the bus and not showing through the window. And you have all those elements kind of floating in front of the window. Now to add a little shine to my bus windows, I've just taken my, I just take my glossy accents, I squirt a little bit out, and then I use the nozzle to kind of spread the glossy accents around. And this dries pretty quickly and you have some nice shine on your windows. So I hope you enjoyed this fun little card. If you have any questions, please visit HeroArts.com.